effect again, right? All right, let's all find our places. I hope that uh, you're finding that challenging. I hope you're finding it helpful. Again, this is simply, this is just a tool, one of many that we're going to use. And um, I don't know about you, I hope, I like being in a church that holds me accountable. I like being in a place uh, where I'm going to be encouraged to not just talk about it, but to grow and to do it. I'm thankful to be in a place where there's mercy and there's grace. And so when I fall short, it's not attack with clubs. It's let's build up. Let's help one another out. And so that's kind of what we're trying to do. So before we go, I want to um, I want to draw your attention to this verse. I meant to throw that up there for you guys. Go ahead and go to the next one. I want to draw your attention to this verse and uh, consider the differences between knowledge and wisdom. The Bible says the wise shall, not the smart, the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Consider the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is simply the possession of information. Information like knowing that your car takes 520 oil. All right? Wisdom, on the other hand, is the ability to use that information and the discipline to use that information, like keeping your oil changed at a regular interval. So with just a little bit of knowledge, you can sound smart, you can feel mature, and you can even look Christian, but don't get anything twisted. It takes wisdom to be smart. It takes wisdom to be mature, and it takes wisdom to be Christ-like. Amen? Amen. Uh, you can have all the information, and there's all sorts of people out there who can stand behind a pulpit just like this and dazzle with knowledge. Look at their life. What does their life look like? We tend to gravitate toward and want to follow people who have done what we want to do. They have what we want to have. They, we want to be more like that person. That's what God has called us to be, to shine a light, to draw people to say, look, I have what you want. I am what you want to be, Christ-like. That's what we're striving for, not out of arrogance, but in humility, all right? Now, a fool is someone who may know, but never follows through. But make it no mistake again, you can't fool God. And you can only fool others so long. One of the most haunting verses in the Bible, Numbers chapter 32, verse 23, it says, But if you will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. That one, I mean, when I learned my alphabet, it was A, B, C, and each one was a, 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 a letter. And B... When I was learning my alphabet was, be sure your sin will find you out. That has haunted me in my whole life. There is no such thing as getting away with it. Your mom may never find out. Your spouse may never find out. But the only one who really matters, the only one you're going to stand before, was watching you there the whole time. Be sure your sin will find you out. The Bible also says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. It does not matter what area of life you're talking about. It could be physical, it could be financial, it could be relational. If you know but don't do, eventually it's going to catch up with you. Eventually it's going to be obvious that you may be able to sound smart but you aren't doing it. Or that you never took the time to learn. You run that car without oil... I don't care how much you know about viscosity. I don't know how. Mu I don't care how much you know. You go run in your car without oil. Eventually, it is going to break you down on the side of the road. True. It's just how it is. One last thing. Going back to this verse: the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Let me ask you: What do you suppose the future holds for those who? Embrace these truths. For those who uh, apply them, practice them, 
fall forward and get better and better and better because they just keep trying to learn this? What do you think the future holds for them versus the people who just decide that it's too complicated? It's too much work. You, you, you're making it harder than it has to be. Or here's one. I'll just do my best. And if that's not good enough, that's on you, not on me. I did my best. And you are always trying to complicate things with the love languages and this, that, or the other. That's like saying, well, I know I'm an archer, or I know I'm a hunter, and, I'm, and, and unless this arrow gets in that deer, we don't eat. But this aiming thing, and, and making sure that you knock the arrow properly, not... You just, you just take the thing and pull the thing and do the thing and, and it's just magically supposed to hit there. No, it's work. And consider the fate, consider the future of those who acknowledge that it's hard. Acknowledge that it can be complicated. But acknowledge that we have a Savior who has given us the instructions. And we faithfully apply them versus the, it's your fault if you don't recognize how wise and loving I am. Come on. It's time to wake up. What do you think the contrast is going to look like in their marriage? Just, we're all standing, sitting right here, and time's coming at us. We're either going to apply this in our marriage, or we're not. Just like hitting a golf ball or shooting a bullet or an arrow... You know whether you did it right, just give it time. True? And so, six months from now, a year from now, will you have applied this and you're just starting to get good at it? What do you think that's going to look like in your marriage? Versus if you say, I right, it's, you know, whew, got through that sermon. What do you think it's going to look like with your kids? We spent a lot of time talking in Sunday school that it's important. Kids need to learn these things that we're talking about. There's some things you just don't fail, and that's one of them. So if you apply these things, and you know your kid, so that when you're talking to this one versus that one, if you, if you don't change gears, if you don't change approaches, I know that if I don't change approaches between Isaac and Gracie, if I am so arrogant and foolish to say, well, I'm just the dad, and you've got to catch up to me. If I do that, I lose. And they lose. Make sense? So what do you think the future holds for parents who listen and pay attention and know their kid and apply and communicate truth and communicate love in a way that is dialed into them? Amen. So since we're all Americans and money talks, consider... What do you think the economic future, the vocational future, is for someone who takes this truth and applies it with their boss, their employees, their clients? What do you think the economic future, the business or vocational future is for someone who acknowledges truth and recognizes that truth matters everywhere and applies this truth to their clients, to their boss? What, how do you receive love? What are your priorities? And then you communicate to your boss or to your employees or to that client in a way that is dialed into them because you're paying attention, because you are well taught, well trained. You think it's going to make a difference? Of course it will. And let's go to the ultimate. What do you think the future holds? What do you think the difference is going to be? What do you think the contrast is going to look like when you stand before God and you're giving an account for your life, your stewardship of the love that God gave you, your spouse, your kids, your career, your ministry? Think about that. What do you think the contrast is going to look like when we stand before God? It's going to be big. Between those who love as Christ loved, go to where they are, do what is needed, speak in a way that is informed about who they are, versus, 
well, we're just going to do what we do, and if people don't like it, that's their deal. What do you think it's going to look like when we stand before God? My friends, I don't know about you. I, uh, I want to be this guy, not that guy. Amen? Amen. I want to be the kind of person and build the kind of life that performs in a way that glorifies God and builds up my family here and this church here on this earth, in this life. I want to be successful. And more importantly than that, I want to be the kind of person and I want to build the kind of life that when I stand before God, I hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You took the truth that I gave you, you applied it, you fumbled around with it, but you stayed at it, and eventually you got kind of good at it. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but that's what matters most to me. And it's worth the time, and it's worth the embarrassment, and it's worth the failure, and it's worth failing forward as long as it takes till you start to get it. Amen? Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you and praise you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we thank you that you showed us how to love one another. Lord, you came right to where we were. You knew exactly what we needed. And yet you still, in your mercy and in your grace and in your wisdom, chose to communicate in ways that are dialed in to us. Lord, that you, you wrote four different Gospels knowing that they would apply to different groups of people. You used so many different flawed people in your word to show us so that there would be people we could identify with, their successes and their failures and their tendencies. Lord, you showed up, you performed miracles, and that, yet you also just taught straight out of the word. Lord, we're thankful that you were the perfect example of how to love. Lord, you paid so much. You sacrificed so much for us. You humbled yourself. You were shamed. You gave yourself for us. God, I pray that your example would inspire us. Lord, that none of us would walk out of this building wagging our heads as if you are asking us to do too much. Lord, I pray that we would recognize how good and patient and kind you are. Lord, that your word and these tools that you've given us, you gave us so that we can have more joy here on this earth. That you're trying to lead us and guide us for our own best interest. But Lord, I pray that that cross would be the deciding factor in what we choose to pour ourselves into. God, I pray that we would all leave this place not feeling judged or down, but God, that we would absolutely leave this place determined to fail as much as it takes so that we can learn the skills and the disciplines of loving you and loving others. Again, we praise you and we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. In your name we pray. Amen.